What's up world, this is Colin with All Day, and today I want to talk to you about what is being considered the fifth mode of transportation right underneath automobile, rail, air, and sea. That's right, I'm talking about the Hyperloop. So, what is the Hyperloop? Hyperloop is a ground-based transportation system in which people and cargo will travel up to 760 miles per hour in what is described as by the original visionary Elon Musk as a cross between Concorde, a railgun, and an air hockey table. Elon Musk of SpaceX and Tesla and PayPal introduced this idea of a Hyperloop in 2012. It's a cross between a Concorde, a railgun, and an air hockey table. Basically, it's a futuristic transportation system that you would expect to see in the Jetsons. Occupants and cargo will board a 28 passenger capsule which will then accelerate to somewhere between 760 to 800 miles per hour, delivering passengers to their destination far faster than by traditional rail or by car. Even flying from Los Angeles to San Francisco will still take you approximately one hour, where the Hyperloop is estimated to take about 35 minutes and at a fraction of the cost. So the big question is, how does Hyperloop work? Well, you would basically go to a Hyperloop station similar to a train station, just a lot cooler and a lot more futuristic. You would then board a transport capsule or a pod that would then rocket you up to 760 miles per hour, close to the speed of sound. This is done by operating the capsule inside a vacuum tube which creates a low pressure environment similar to an airplane at cruising altitude where the craft is met with less resistance. It doesn't encounter a lot of resistance and then you have in front of the capsule a compressor that takes away the air. So the remaining resistance moves it to the back so that basically the capsule it doesn't touch anywhere, it doesn't have resistance in the front and it can just hover with little energy and reach those top speeds at 760 miles per hour. The craft itself would use a linear electric motor to get moving and accelerate. And as the capsule begins moving, air is sucked in through an air intake and redirected to air skis to create a smooth as glass ride experience. So what's an air ski? Well, the air ski uses the air around it to create a pressurized cushion of air between the ski itself and the Hyperloop tube, basically translating to very little friction. It is with this very little friction that the speed of the capsule can get up to and maintain 760 miles an hour or near the speed of sound. In fact, most of the energy for Hyperloop would derive from solar panels placed both on the capsules themselves but also along the tube, assuring that Hyperloop will have virtually no greenhouse emissions and in fact may actually produce more energy than it consumes. The Hyperloop tube will sit on pylons elevating the entire system above the ground instead of sitting directly on it, such as with a traditional rail system. This serves both to reduce the footprint and impact of the project on landowners, as well as serves as a safeguard in the event of an earthquake. So for most of the route, the tube would actually be suspended above the ground and likely running parallel to already traveled routes such as Interstate 5. Is Hyperloop safe? Well, this is something that no one can really answer with 100% certainty as there's no real world data to support or refute Hyperloop safety at this point. Additionally, they're barely getting off the ground creating test tracks in California and in Texas, and those still are going to be a couple of years out until they're complete and can start to generate the data required to make that sort of an assessment. However, what we do know about the science of Hyperloop and what we do know about Hyperloop on paper is that it's not only a very feasible project, it's a very, very safe mode of transportation. A vast majority of all train derailments and train accidents were as a result of human error. The entire Hyperloop system is run by computers, thus taking the human error factor from the equation. The transportation capsules are enclosed in a vacuum tube, which take away elements such as weather, which are to blame for all too many transportation related accidents. A majority of the system's tubes would sit on pylons, which would reduce the effects of an earthquake in that it would bend and sway instead of breaking. We should also consider that when trains were first introduced in the 1800s, some people were terrified of traveling on something that went so fast. Even more, how many people were first to jump at the opportunity to travel by air, yet here we are over 100 years after the first flight at Kitty Hawk, and air travel is one of the safest methods of transportation. So, are they actually going to end up building Hyperloop? Well, at this point, all signals actually point in the direction of yes. Designers of the speed tube say they are just one step closer to actually making that happen. KKL 9's Andrea Fujii is live in Playa Vista with the latest milestone in the future of transportation. Andrea. 
Elsa, Tesla founder Elon Musk proposed this new technology called Hyperloop, and it's being developed right now in Playa Vista here in this hangar behind me. Hyperloop Technologies has already raised $11.1 million in a Series A round of venture capital from notable investors including Formation 8, New Fund, Caspian VC Partners, Sherpa, and Zen Fund, and is currently working on an $80 million Series B. According to Hyperloop Technologies' new CEO, Rob Lloyd, who served as a top executive for Cisco for 20 years, a scaled-down test track and speed test should be completed by the end of 2016 or early 2017, and the company is on track to be under construction with two or three production-scale Hyperloops within the next two to three years. Now, this seems good and great and all, but what would this actually end up costing? The shocking thing here is the proposed cost for a project of this magnitude. Current estimates place the sticker price at $7.6 billion for the first route from Los Angeles to San Francisco. Whether you believe those figures or not, it's really pretty irrelevant, and here's why. It is estimated to cost between 70 to 100 billion taxpayer dollars for the California high-speed rail system, which has the dubious distinction of being the slowest and most expensive per mile high-speed rail system being constructed in the world today. So can you kind of give us an idea of the major differences between this project versus a rail system? Um, they're way slower than we would be and way more expensive. So most high-speed rail projects uh, actually do not make money. Our whole concept is based on the fact that this is a business, it's a venture. Um, we don't rely on public funding necessarily. Thus far, the resources for this project have essentially come from either crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, individual investors, or resources such as the UCLA School of Architecture and Design. Where's the tightest curve on, between Los Angeles and Las Vegas? This so, is 300 miles per hour? Yeah. About 25 UCLA graduate architecture students have been working tirelessly to help change the way we travel. They look at this as a blank sheet of paper on which they can realize their fantasy. With their contributions to Hyperloop, these students from around the world now have stock options in the company, but they say they're not in it for the money. Additionally, resources are being pooled from companies such as Elon Musk's own Tesla Motors and SpaceX, as well as the general public in the way of crowdsourcing to go ahead and assist working on the project. So, my final thoughts, this is the disruptive technology that we need. Technology that makes the world a smaller place, more accessible to everyone. This technology is cheaper, faster, safer, cleaner, better in every single way. I mean, it's only a wonder that the state of California hasn't jumped all over this opportunity to substitute their overhyped California high-speed rail system. It has the dubious distinction of being the slowest bullet train um, <laughs> and the most expensive per mile. Um. <laughs> Go California! <laughs> this may all sound so far-fetched and out of grasp, Traveling 760 miles per hour, reaching LA to San Francisco in just over a half hour, and for thinking that I couldn't really blame you, except this was the brainchild of Elon Musk, one of the founders of PayPal and the founder of Tesla Motors and SpaceX. The man who's been told so, so many times that what he's proposing is impossible. Then he goes off and does something like this. Um, but even the handling is better than any other all-wheel drive because we're able to digitally transfer the torque from front to rear. The the uh, performance version of the, the dual motor uh, has an acceleration, 0 to 60 time, equivalent to one of the, the best supercars ever, which is an McLaren F1. So it goes 0 to 60 in 3.2 seconds. All right. Ah! <laughs> wow. Three, two, one, zero. Lift off of Falcon 9. It's like launching a pencil over the Empire State Building, <laughs> having it reverse, come back down, and land on a shoebox on the ground in a windstorm. That's that's what's happening. the critical part. Yes. <laughs> and I don't think I could throw a pencil over the Empire State it's Building insane and catch them. It's insane to do. And the crazy thing is, we're like 30 seconds away from this. From this, from this crazy the, 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 This extremely energetic room is, you can, is a hush. <laughs> Oh, 
LZ1, the profit has landed. Landing operators moving procedure 11.100, section 3 on LZ1 BNet, recovery net. Repeat, copy. Yeah. 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 Need I say more? So there you have it, folks. Hopefully you now know a little bit more about Hyperloop than you did before you clicked on this video. But in case you do have any questions or comments on the matter, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you like what you saw, please click like and subscribe to see future videos like this. And until next time, this is Colin with All Day saying, keep traveling.